Bonjour. Uh, I think we can get started. So uh, my name is Shiming. I'm with IBM. But this talk is about, it's not about IBM. <laughs> it's about uh, Suning.com. Uh, you can see the names Zhang Xiaobin and uh, Jin Long here. Uh, they actually proposed this talk to the summit, but unfortunately, they cannot make it today. Uh, as for the reasons, I will mention that later. Uh, I have been uh, involved with uh, Suning.com for uh, quite some time now, and today I will try to present for them. Uh, if you have any questions, please contact his authors. Okay. Uh, this is the agenda, uh, uh, the topics I will touch today. Uh, first, a little bit introduction of Suning for those of you who uh, have no idea about what Suning is. And then uh, Suning's OpenStack journey like most uh, OpenStack startups or open st uh, other companies adopting OpenStack, their journey is not a long one, but they have uh, learned a lot and they have some wish list to share with the community. Um, so uh, this is an o overview of uh, Suning.com. Uh, this company actually was established uh, more than 20 years ago. It's uh, today the largest retailer company in China. And uh, it is among the top three Chinese private enterprises. Uh, you may want to read this a little bit uh, carefully because it's a Chinese culture. When I am the top one, Usually, I will say I'm among the top three. So you can get the idea. It's almost uh, number one. So um, uh, Suning's business uh, is not limited to retailing. Uh, today, it has um, uh, logistics, supply chain, and even real estate investments. So uh, the com company is growing very, very fast. So by the end of 2012, so that's uh, some data need to be refreshed. Uh, they already have stores in more than 700 cities in China and uh, abroad in other countries. Um, the total number of staff is 180,000. That's a big company. They have R&D centers in Beijing, in Shanghai, in Nanjing, and even in Silicon Valley. So uh, the brand value and the to an, uh, annual revenue is, is over there. You can read the number. Uh, to give you uh, some rough idea of how large the retaining market is, I'm also showing you some numbers over there here. This is only the first half of 2014, the, the first half of this year. Uh, the total market uh, size is uh, $175 billion, and the year-to-year -year growth is uh, more than 40%. So this is a, is a big cake. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so... Uh, what, what, why, why Suning has to uh, uh, do cloud business? So this company has not uh, has been uh, using cloud for quite some years. Uh, to be honest, they didn't start with OpenStack. They were using some other cloud software. Uh, what they see uh, in cloud is Cloud is actually bringing them many opportunities. Um, needless to say, there are also many challenges as well. Um, they want to uh, adopt cloud technology, just like um, someone, some big guy said, uh, Monday, every company today is a software company. 
So Sunni is trying to uh, re-innovate -inno themselves to um, uh, seek opportunities in uh, business, business model innovation, uh, new collaboration models, and uh, also a, a, a lot of other opportunities here. Um, so Sony Cloud, uh, this is also a brief overview, is not OpenStack. It's, it's uh, using some other cloud software. Uh, they have their own private cloud and also open cloud, uh, public cloud. Uh, their pri private cloud uh, has uh, multiple data centers. Um, just in Nanjing city alone, they have two data centers. And also in Beijing, um, they have uh, thousands of physical machines and tens of thousands of uh, virtual machines uh, for their private cloud. Uh, they have installed uh, a lot of middleware and applications. They have implemented their own automatic deployment, orchestration, and so on and so forth. Uh, for the they also offer public cloud uh, uh, as business. They, they provide uh, uh, virtual machines, virtual storage, database as service. Uh, it seems like this company is evolving to something else. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. Uh, Sunin's OpenStack journey is is not a long history. Uh, they only started uh, using OpenStack uh, since middle last year. Uh, I think that's Hanlan version. They did their inst uh, install manually, step by step, hacking the configuration files, or all, all those kind of stuff. And uh, uh, today, this uh, deployment has evolved from a single deployment to um, a multi uh, data center deployment. And uh, the, the usage is not limited to R&D activities, they have uh, uh, gradually uh, migrating uh, their existing uh, workloads to OpenStack Cloud. Uh, here is some, some uh, status about their uh, installation, about the compute. They have uh, not so bad physical host. And for storage, they were using uh, Cinder multi backend uh, combined with LVM and cluster with uh, QoS um, guarantees. Uh, for network, they have isolated the admin data and uh, storage uh, traffic. They use um, OVS bounding to improve availability. They use hardware-based uh, load balancing. Uh, that's network. Uh, they are also experimenting container. So container is so hard today, Suning is no exception. They, they want to look into this to see what they can get uh, from container technologies. I think uh, today, today the topic is, if the topic is about container, <laughs> this room will be very, very crowded. <laughs> okay. um, as for deployment, they have been using Cobbler and the Puppet. They are trying a uh, sort and Ansible now and um, anything. Um, they for the uh, controller nodes, they have set up uh, three nodes uh, for HA's purpose. And for monitoring, they have been using the uh, uh, proprietary monitoring tools and some open source uh, tools as well. And for optimization, uh, they have uh, resource scheduling for single node or multi-tiered or uh, distributed uh, application configurations. Um, so next, uh, I'll talk a little bit about their workloads. So what are Shunin run running on the OpenStack cloud and their previous cloud? Uh, I'm calling this a Drew because it's pretty complicated, pretty mixed. Um, you can see 
they have more than 100 applications. Each cap application looks different. Um, it's a mix of CPU intensive workloads and I.O. intensive workloads. Um, for example, uh, they were uh, developing mobile applications for their mobile uh, endpoints uh, for the end uh, consumers so that you can buy something using your mo mobile phone. Those development activities was hosted on, on cloud and it means a lot of storage requests, 800 gig, uh, gigabytes or even one terabyte uh, the, uh, storage requirement. They also do some search engine compilation, and they do sentiment analysis uh, job. Needless to say, they want to watch, uh, they want to monitor what the consumers say about Sony. And that, that's uh, some very valuable information, uh, feedback to the company. Um, uh, an interesting point is uh, thumbnail picture, th those image generation, they, they did it online, on the fly, using some open source library. Uh, they didn't pay any attention to this, but later on they found, oh, wow, those uh, thumbnail uh, picture generation is very, very CPU intensive. So uh, it's, it's not what they expected. Um, for the, uh, uh, it's not, uh, and th this company, uh, for their internet applications, they have been using different software stacks. They both use uh, open source stacks, Apache, uh, uh, JBoss, MySQL, and also some IBM uh, solutions, uh, IHS, uh, was DB2. And they are using something else as well. So it's, uh, very complicated mixture. And the, the complexity of their workloads is lim not limited to this. Um, here I'm showing you <coughs> a very simple, very um, representative multi-tiered enterprise workload. You have a web front end serving the HTTP request. You have your business logics deployed into the middle tier, the application server. You have your data stored in the back end, uh, you know, which may be a cluster or, or something. Anyway, it's a database. Uh, in Sunix's case, because um, they have 100, more than 100 applications, these applications came from different development team, different departments. Um, sometimes they want the front end clustered. They want it to be auto scaled. They want this uh, front end to be deployed on different hosts, the different availability zones, uh, even across data centers. And for the middle tier, they also have this uh, requirement. But uh, for the middle tier, is is where the the the, the core uh, is is executed. It's their business logic. They upgrade their applications uh, every one to four weeks. It's pretty short release cycle. So when you have your VMs deployed, be prepared. You will upgrade it just a, a few weeks later. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty short uh, release cycle. Uh, for the backend database, um, Sometimes they, 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 they want this to be um, active passive configurations. Uh, sometimes they don't. Uh, they also have some placement requirements as well. Um, to add more complexity to this picture. So this connection between tiers is very, very flexible. Um, if you are scaling your front end and or your mi middle tier or your back end, these different tiers need to discover each other automatically, dynamically. So the service discovery and the 
registration is um, is a difficult problem for them. Sometimes they have to hard code it, but uh, today we hope something, some tools from OpenStack can help this. Uh, so we started with Heave. Okay, um, <coughs> so uh, that's about the complexity of their workloads. Uh, as for the deployment, um, I have mentioned some complexities, but uh, here are some more. They, their applications came from different departments, different teams. Each team has their own unique view how they will use Apache, how they will use JBoss. Some team will use Apache as a load balancer or just a reverse proxy, not web server. Some teams will throw Apache away. They think, okay, JBoss is providing a HTTP server already. So um, maybe, maybe uh, it's desirable to, to, to unify this. Um, but uh, there is a saying, if something didn't break, you don't want to fix it. So if their current configuration is already tested, has been run for a long time, we had better not change it at the moment. So that's um, some complexity. And uh, okay, service discovery and uh, registration. I've mentioned that. Um, last thing is about workload distribution. Um, in in traditional enterprise applications, uh, usually you config uh, a thread pool, a worker pool, or something like that for for uh, scaling. But in on a virtualization platform, on cloud, that is not that is not um, the fact now. Uh, instead of forking new processes, you are creating new virtual machines. And it's not just only about creating new virtual machines. You are deploying your middleware, your application, you configure it from from the very beginning, so it's not it's not as uh, lightweight as just forking a, a, a new process. So this is um, a challenge uh, they have realized when they migrate their enterprise workloads onto clouds. It's it's not just uh, about OpenStack; it's about any cloud. Um, so why why they started trying heat? So they saw some valuable uh, points from heat. First of all, heat, in their eyes, is an orchestrator, an orchestration tool that sits above Nova, Neutron, Cinder, what, whatever. It's a, it's, it's a user-facing tool. And uh, they see the template-based VM provisioning is a great convenience. It reduced their the, 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 the complexities, the workloads for the uh, uh, IT operators or uh, uh, some service stuff. So um, they also <coughs> see the auto scaling support from heat um, very, very important for, for them. So just give you an idea about Auto scaling, what it means for Sunni in particular. So, uh, just guess how long does it take to sell five million cans of milk powder here or anywhere? Or 100 containers milk. So, in Sunil's case, it's only three days. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm showing a date there, is November 11th. 
You can see the number there, four ones, four singles. How lonely are <laughs> they are. So when people feel so lonely, they buy milk powder, they buy, uh, <laughs> they, 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 they drink milk. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's the reason. But uh, I'm only going to give you some examples. They, they uh, during promotion seasons or even just holidays, holidays or weekends, their workload increased dramatically, seven times, 30 times. So auto skating is really, really very important for them. It's, it's a game is, is kind of um, uh, fun for us, for developers, but for them it's real money. So that's, um, that's what we learned from uh, Sony. And uh, they also hope HEAT can provide them with a standardized uh, approach or even a process for the application deployment and uh, acquisition as well. So that's why uh, they adopted HEAT. So uh, about the deployment, uh, currently we, we see um, HEAT mainly as a deployment tool. It is positioned as an orchestration tool, but there are a lot of things we can, we can work on, we can improve. Um, for example, the post-launch configurations, which is a primary, primarily a configuration tool, such as Puppet Chef, their domain, HIT has done some work to bridge these two domains, VM provisioning and um, in instance of configuration management. Um, in this domain, they have used uh, Cobbler and Puppet, and uh, fortunately, they, uh, they can bridge this with HIT using the software config. But what is um, very difficult uh, for them is the service discovery and mutual uh, registration. In HEAT, sometimes you have to um, express this as dependencies uh, among resources, but HEAT doesn't allow circles in, their in, in your template. But sometimes for, for them, they have to do this something on, on, on the frontier, then on on the middle tier, and then back on the front tier, then back. So this is, uh, circles are not, not so um, so easy to, to be removed. So uh, that's some something uh, they are thinking about. Um, okay, next I'm gonna share <coughs> with you uh, some lessons uh, the Sony team uh, has learned uh, when they are were using HEAT. Uh, uh, today, HEAT is uh, more about deployment, as I just mentioned. And uh, it's not a full-fledged uh, orchestrator yet. Hopefully, with a uh, convergence work, uh, something like that uh, merged in, uh, HEAT will be more popular, will be more valuable tool for, for, for our customers. Um, HEAT, so HEAT, based deployment all only covers part of the story. So the Sony guys were asking us um, a simple question. <laughs> so we hope he can do everything, but you tell us we still cannot abandon Puppet, we still have to use Ansible. Why Heat? <laughs> so that's, that, that's some, some, some question we need uh, to think about. Uh, uh, it is about the positioning of each tool, each project, but for the end users, what they want? They want an end-to-end -to -end tool sheet from, from the basic image uh, to the application fully configured, customized, up and running. So that's, that's a workflow. We have to have some tools to make that process very easy for the users to use.
And the other thing uh, uh, the team has found out is uh, auto scaling. Uh, I just mentioned auto scaling is very, very uh, important for for zoning. But they have uh, learned a lot of from this. Uh, for example, uh, there are defects, there are flaws. The zoning update is very important for them. But if you don't specify some properties, it's it just don't work. Auto scaling, uh, as I understand it, uh, is not thoroughly tested uh, in the community because it's a, it's a cross project integration. To get auto scaling running, you need heat, cinometer, Nova, and maybe something else, for example, Keystone. So uh, to test this automatically from the community side is, um, is a big burden. So we spent uh, about two months on, on this. Uh, we have found some other problems as well, such as if I'm creating um, an auto scaling group and scaling it from one instance to up to three instances at, at maximum, Sometimes we saw what we saw is the number of instances jumped from one to three directly. Why? Because my second instance was launched very, very slow, very, very slowly. We we were uh, installing things uh, on that instance. Uh, during this period, we got a second alarm from Cilantro. We 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 have no. F uh, got there. So the second alarm triggered another scale up. Yes, um, in, in, in heat auto scaling group, there is a cool down, but that period is not counted into cool down because uh, the second instance is not up yet. So those are some c very common cases uh, we found. Uh, we need to fix that. And I think I, I, I have filed, filed a bug. Um, assign that back to myself, uh, I, I will fix it. Um, another problem they have found is cinometer evaluator um, sometimes work, sometimes just don't. Um, we, still, uh, we are still investigating this. Um, for example, at the very beginning, an alarm is in interfacing data status. That means that alarm has not accumulated enough data to make a judgment whether the, the, the alarm is triggered or not. Then when the alarm has accumulated sufficient data, it will be changed to OK or alarm state. OK means something you, you can ignore. But alarm is something you need to pay attention to. So from that moment on, you have accumulated some data to uh, change the alarm state. But uh, in our experiments, later on, that alarm may change back to insufficient data again. But that, that makes no sense. Sometimes something is, is not running correctly from the cinometer side. So uh, we are still looking into that. So fixing all these bugs uh, is not um, an easy job. Um, we are still working on that. Um, OK, continue on lessons learned. Uh, previously, when they were talking to us, when the Suning team they themselves were experimenting with auto scaling with heat, they believe maybe their application should be triggered, uh, their scaling should be triggered by um, network packets uh, transferred, uh, bytes transferred uh, by those metrics. But later on, they found, wow, that is not so interesting at all. What is more important is still about CPU utilization. Something, uh, the workload may eventually translate itself into 
CPU utilization or memory, memory uh, pressure. So um, there are some other requirements about uh, how to trigger auto scaling as well. Uh, to be honest, uh, the different units, different departments from Sony, they were fighting each other. They they were trying to figure out what is the best uh, equation, uh, what's uh, the, the or the formula um, to to compose uh, a trigger. It's a combination of CPU utilization and memory, or something and something. It's it's. Uh, I don't think th there will be a uniform uh, equation there. Uh, it it will still be an application specific thing, but there are some requirements there uh, for different workloads. Remember, they have one more than 100 applications. Yes, okay. Um, rolling update is very, very important. It's of critical importance for their workloads. Uh, even they have to upgrade something, have to, have to patch something, uh, the whole process has to be non-intrusive um, in to the business. Um, deletion policy. Deletion, deletion policy means when you need to scale down or delete some uh, <coughs> member from a group, uh, the def by default policy is uh, delete the oldest one. Uh, but uh, in Sony's case, they would prefer the other way. They would prefer you delete the youngest one. Why? They think the oldest one, the oldest instances may already hashed something, may have already been proved to be st stable. Why delete the oldest one? If I'm scaling down, delete the youngest. So that's their their suggestion. So uh, we need some some support here um, for scaling uh, or scaling. Uh, they really need the detection, the trigger detection, and the scaling operation being done very fast, hopefully in seconds. But um, in their experiments, using some complicated middleware, <laughs> the scaling to, to create a new instance takes about uh, 20 minutes or so. Th that that's not not acceptable for them. Uh, for experiments purpose, uh, it's not a big deal, but for them, it's real money. You have you got to scale up very very quickly. Okay, um, next I'm gonna uh, share with you some wish list uh, I got from our Sunni friends. Uh, first is about availability. One problem they have um, frequently encountered is hard disk error. Um, I don't know if uh, there are some good suggestions from the community, from, from you, Maybe uh, how to handle this? Hard disk today is not so so reliable. Uh, they they each time they encounter this, th it, it means a interruption somewhere. So uh, this is the about the storage. The VM high availability. Uh, I know there are there are guys uh, who are against this, but for Sunning for them. They really treat their their workloads as pets. If something is wrong, they want it to be quickly detected and quickly recovered. So um, it's so from our engagement well, uh, with them, uh, we learned that um, this doesn't sound like a single project's uh, job. From OpenStack's perspective, uh, the failure scenarios may include host failure, storage network. Everything may become unreliable. 
your guest operating system may crash, your application may be buggy, everything, anything can fail. But they are not well prepared for this. So we need, need to help them how to detect those failures and recover them automatically. So for detection, if uh, Nova, Nova take Nova as an example. Nova has service group today. They, they are um, maintaining an internal HA status of their host. When some host is down, they won't schedule new uh, VMs for those hosts. But this kind of inf information is not exposed. When a service, uh, when a compute host is down, no one else knows. But for Sony's case, they really want to know this. If uh, they, they want to get notification there. Is, uh, is a, serv a host failure? Okay, my VMs were running on this. Can I migrate them or evacuate them? So this is a uh, discovery. And some of these notifications are already there for the VMs. There are VM life cycle events uh, collected by Synometer. But we need to uh, a channel to let Synometer to notify heat. Okay, some VMs are done. Do you care about it? If you don't care, ignore it. If you do care, you can. It's time to do something now. So uh, we believe this is uh, maybe not a single project uh, uh, um, goal. Uh, at least for today, there can be some solution to that built across uh, pro uh, projects. But uh, eventually, uh, we hope that HEAT can help do this, uh, considering that there is a huge effort in the community about convergence. If you s say, okay, this VM is not going to fail. Okay, when HEAT detect this, HEAT will recover it automatically. That, but th that's not today. Uh, eventually, we, we, we need this kind of feature support. Um, auto scaling, <coughs> uh, again. <laughs> so uh, I've talked about uh, triggers. Sometimes because their uh, group, the auto scaling group, is scaling very slowly, considering a lot of uh, post uh, launch configuration work uh, there, they they were thinking maybe okay tomorrow there will be a complaint. There will be a promotion. Can we launch this uh, huge uh, group automatically uh, at a given uh, point in time? This is uh, more like um, ground-based auto-scaling that scaled it down in the middle of the night. No one is buying <laughs> uh, in the middle of the night. And uh, they also want some smarter VM placement. For example, having Three Apache servers running one physical host, that's not a big deal. If I have all my Apache servers running one host, it's too risky. They, they won't accept it. So who is going to do this? Is a scheduler hint or something? Um, we, are, we are still trying to figure out uh, whether this can is solvable. Uh, there are also other requirements uh, about scaling is about scaling about availability zone is uh, purely an HA perspective and uh, scaling across region. That is about the workload. Sometimes they, they cannot handle all the workload from a, s a single data center. They have to do uh, this from multiple data centers. So that's uh, a real requirement. Um, so uh, from their uh, experience about uh, uh, using heat, they really wish uh, there could be some kind of application profile support from the community. Uh, it's not about individual templates and nested templates, a collection of templates. Uh, they want this um, to be configurable. Um, so 
my my knowledge uh, uh, in this area is very limited. Uh, maybe uh, some of you can give us uh, some suggestion. Maybe Solom or Moreno, those projects are they mature enough to support this use case? I don't know. I'm uh, I'm seeking some suggestions here uh, to help uh, uh, Sony. Um, the provider templates um, uh, early this week. Uh, uh, the heat core team has presented some advanced uh, use case of heat. Uh, they have mentioned the provided uh, templates. It's it's good thing. It promotes your template reusability. Is um, it helps uh, you to to do some version control. But sometimes uh, provider templates is not so convenient. Um, uh, for example. Uh it's 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 difficult or impossible to reference f resources from another nested template from this nested template is but they really need this kind of support. Um, the it's very uh, not an easy task to get the dependency done right on the. I have mentioned earlier is, uh, for example, the, the, the circular dependencies is not allowed, is not permitted in heat, but sometimes uh, in real use cases, uh, they need this. Um, okay, this I think is my last slide. Uh, they have found some uh, high frequent calls to heat engine they suspect this is c this comes from OS config kind of uh, scripts. Uh, they're not quite so sure yet. Uh, if that is the reason, maybe we can make the the polling uh, the script running in your instance is polling heat for okay. Is there any new software deployments? Uh, any changes to the software deployments? Uh, those frequency can be configured, but once configured, it becomes a constant. So uh, what they were proposing is maybe we can have this interval set very short at the first hour or, or so. When I'm I'm launching things, I'm I'm getting the stack up and running, but later on. To come back to me every one hour. There could be some new software released. Maybe one day is enough. So that's that's something desirable. And the uh, tools and guidance for for them to um, make this heat-based workload deployment a standard process. It's not just only about version control they, they need some some guidance some maybe some documents would be okay uh, preferably it would be some tools so uh, to make the whole deployment and management thing much easier for them so I think that's all I'm gonna share with you today I'm presenting this for SUNY <laughs> I'm with IBM so uh, actually, uh, uh, this noon, I'm, I'm going to show some VMHA demo and the uh, cross-region uh, uh, prototype at IBM booth. If you have time, uh, so stop by. Thank you.